Okay. Good morning, everyone. We'll uh, call our meeting to order. First item we have is a request for bill introductions. Uh, Senator McGinn. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a bill introduction, and it's RS-2627, and it uh, concerns uh, establishing the Rail Safety Improvement Act. We have a motion. We have a second. Second by Senator Clays. Any questions, discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we'll move on to our budget reports. We'll start out with the executive subcommittee, Senator Solentrum, Department of Administration. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Morning committee, <clears throat> starting off with the uh, Department of Administration. The agency requests a revised estimate <clears throat> of 216 million in on budget expenditures and uh, 88 on budget FTE positions for FY22, including 154 million uh, SGF, 36 million from ELARF and 21 million in transfers from the state highway fund. This represents a reduction of 4.6 million or 2.1% below the approved 21 legislator. The reduction is primarily attributable to a lapse of 4.6 million SGF for savings related to the issuance of pension obligation bonds. The 21 legislature added 28.8 million SGF to the estimated debt service payments for bonds issued pursuant to 2021 HB 2405, which authorized the issuance up of up to 500 million in bonds plus costs at an interest rate not to exceed 4.3 percent. In August 21, the Department of Ve Development Finance Authority finalized and executed the bond purchase agreement at an interest rate of 2.7. Accordingly, debt service payments decreased 28.8 million, which was estimated at the interest cap of 4.3 to 24.2 million at the lower rate of 2.7. The revised estimate includes a lapse of the difference of $4.6 million in FY22. Additionally, the revised estimate includes a lapse of $29,954 SGF to reflect a decrease in CAPERS employer contributions rates from 1509% to 1433% in FY22 based on the issuance of those bonds pursuant to 21 SB159. The revised estimate also includes $87.7 million in off-budget expenditures and 373 Point seven off budget FTE positions, which is a category which are categorized as such to avoid double counting payments from one state agency to another. In FY22, off budget expenditures increased by 1.8 million or 2.1 percent above FY22 amount approved amount. The increase is primarily due to maintenance and uh, service fees across many agencies programs. The, government re the governor recommends $1 billion in off-budget expenditures and 94 on-budget FTE positions for FY22, including $947.8 million SGF, $36.1 million from the ELARF, and $21.3 million in transfers from the State Highway Fund. This represents an increase of $792.4 million, or 365% above the agency's revised estimate. The most significant increase is the attributable to the governor's recommendation to expand 460 million SGF for a one-time 250 tax rebate to eligible Kansans, Kansas residents, 504 residents that filed jointly. This rebate occurs at a one-time direct payment and all Kansas residents who filed a 2020 tax return in 21 would be eligible. The office of the governor estimates that this payment would affect over 1.2 million resident taxpayers. The recommend, recommended amount includes expenditures for the rebate itself, as well as the administrative costs. The governor's recommendation also includes 332 million SGF to pay off two bonds early ahead of schedule, final debt payment service in FY 2035. First, the recommendation includes 160.5 million SGF to pay off series 2015A, which consists of four debt service refunding bonds, debt service for the John Redmond Reservoir, and debt service for the University of Kansas Medical Center Health Education Building. The recommendation includes debt service payments of $27.8 million and a remaining balance of $132.7 million for FY23. 
Second re recommendation includes 171 million SGF to pay off series 2015 G, which is a debt service bond for the state's portion of the National Bio and Agro Defense Facility located in Manhattan, Kansas. This recommendation includes debt service payments of 17.4 million and remaining balance of 154.3 million for FY23. Debt service payments in FY22 for both bonds are already included in the agency's revised estimate. And the governor does not recommend adjustments to that amount. The, government, the governor's recommendation also includes 200,000 SGF, and five, five FTE positions for the Division of Child Advocate and the Office of Public Advocates. Executive Order 2127 created the Office of Public Advocates within the agency and transferred the following entities to it. Office of the Long-Term Care Ombudsman. This program uh, currently exists between, within the Department of Administration. Estimated expenditures are already included in the agency's revised estimate and total 729,000 for FY 2022. Can care. This program would be transferred from the Kansas Department of Aging and Disability. Its responsibilities include assisting in the resolution of concerns about services, coverage, access, and rights related to can care. The Medicaid program for the state of Kansas. Estimated expenditures are included in the KDAS revised estimate in FY 22. Division of Child Advocate. Executive Order 2128 created this program within the Department of Administration to provide oversight for the child welfare system in Kansas. Estimated expenditures are not included in the agency's revised estimate. The recommendation includes salary of 122,000 and fringe benefits of 77,000 expenditures for five new positions within the agency. The recommendations also include 87.7 million in off-budget expenditures and 373, <coughs> excuse me, off-budget FTE positions, which is the same as the agency's revised estimate in 22. The subcommittee concurs with the rec uh, governor's recommendation recommendations for 22 questions on 22 any questions for 22 seeing none please proceed the agency requests 215 million and off in on budget expenditures and 89 on budget FTE positions for 23 including 159 million SGF 36 million from ELAR from 15.9 million in transfer from the state highway fund. This represents a reduction of 1.9 million or 0.9% below the agency's revised estimate for 22. Request an increase, the request includes an overall reduction of 2 million for changes to, in debt service expenditures. Of that amount, there's an increase of 3.5 million SGF offset by reductions of 4,031 from the ELAR from 5.5 million in transfers from the state highway fund. There are five sets of bonds included in, within this adjustment. State House renovation bonds, 2.3 million reduction were issued for the renovation of the Kansas State House, Series 2015A, 1 million, which included four debt service refunding bonds, debt service for the John Redmond Reservoir, and debt service for the University of Kansas Medical Center Education Building. Series 2115G, 3.3 million reduction, which is the state's portion of the National Bio and Iger Defense Facility located in Manhattan. Series 2020R, which is a $3.1 million reduction, which, was ref which refunded bonds related to renovations of the Kansas State House and NBAP, and public broadcasting facilities, and Series 2021P, $5.8 million increase, which refunded bonds related to renovations of the Kansas State House, NBAP, Kansas State Fairgrounds, and the Kansas Department of Wildlife Parks and Facilities. The request also includes 89.5 million in off-budget expenditures and 373 off-budget FTE positions, which are categorized as such to avoid double counting payments for one state agency to another. For FY23, off-budget expenditures increase 1.8 million or 2% above the FY22 revised estimates. The increase is primarily due to higher expenditures for workers' compensation claims and building rent. Governor recommends 290 million in on budget expenditures and 96 uh, on budget FTE positions for 23, including 250 million SGF, 36 million for MILAR, and no state, no state highway fund appropriations. This represents an increase of 75 million or 26 percent above the agency request. The most significant increase is attributable to the governor's recommendation to appropriate 120 million SGF for the rehabilitation and repair of the Docking State Office Building. The 21 legislature added language authorizing the Department of Administration to
to issue up to 120 million in bonds for the docking building subject to the approval from the State Finance Council. Incorporating recommendations from the Joint Committee on State Building Construction, the State Finance Council approved the renovation of the docking building into a three-story building with the office and meeting space. The Office of the Governor indicates this proposal would utilize a budget surplus to fund the project in its entirety rather than incurring additional debt. The Governor also recommends ex ending, ending extraordinary transfers from the Kansas Department of Transportation beginning in 23 for the Department of Administration. This includes an increase of 15.9 million SGF and a corresponding decrease of 15.9 million transfers in the state highway fund. The 15.9 million allocated to this agency fund debt service for the state and adopting the recommendation would result in such payments being primarily made from SGF instead. The recommendation also includes a reduction of 45 million SGF to the account for the governor's proposal to pay off series 2015A, series 2015G, bonds for FY22. If those bonds are paid off in 22, then those budget expenditures would not continue in 23 and onward. The recommendation also includes an increase of 724,000 SGF and eight FTE positions for the Office of Public Advocates. This includes expenditures for the CanCare uh, Ombudsman position, the Division of the Child Advocate um, with five FTE. The recommendation also includes 89.5 million in off-budget expenditures and 373 off-budget FTE positions, which is the same as the agency request in 23. The subcommittee concurs with the governor's recommendation for 23. Questions on 23. Any questions on 2023? Seeing none, if you'd like to make your motion. I grabbed the wrong file. Uh, there is additional information that I can get out to you about the the uh, state office or docking state office building um, at a later date, but um, if you would like to see it. Yes, uh, you know, and, and uh, I think when that went through the building and uh, construction committee, uh, they indicated that they thought they would be able to use about 50% of the funds from uh, the federal programs to pay for half of both uh, uh, the docking and the uh, KDHE lab, correct? Right, that's correct. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, and um, yeah, they also indicated they didn't think it would take the full amount here that they provided to get that done. So there may be some leeway there. So with Mr. Chairman, uh, I'd move, uh, we move out uh, 22 and 23 uh, budgets for the uh, Department of Administration. I have a motion, a second by Senator Clays. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we'll have the Office of Information Technology Services, Senator Solentrum. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The agency estimates, estimates, estimates revised expenditures of $32.2 million, all from special revenue funds in 22. This is an increase of $3.6 million, or 12.7% above the FY22 approved amount. The agency estimated unclaimed property claim payments of 27.2 million in FY22. This is an increase of 9.4 million in claims above the 21 actual amount. The agency reported a decrease in unclaimed property claim payments during the COVID-19 pandemic and anticipates claims to increase in 22. The agency requests an additional 3.6 million all from unclaimed property claims fund in FY22 to make these additional claim payments. The agency revised estimate includes other adjustments of uh, 10478 Other adjustments include anticipated expenditures for the agency's computer replacement plan and anticipated increases in salary and wages expenditures for employer contributions to employee be fringe benefits such as group health insurance. Oh, yeah. I misread it. I pulled the wrong one. Sorry, committee. I apologize for that. Okay. You know what? None of the committee was telling me anything, so. <laughs> I was trying to find it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, boy. Well, I didn't bring the other file, which I was a little bit more prepared for, and that's kind of threw me off, so. 
Anyway, my apologies. Office of Information and Technology Services. The agency requests a revised estimate of 4.3 million including 4.3 million SGF for on budget expenditures for 22. The revised estimate is the same as 22 approved budget included in this amount is 43,000 expenditures from the, S from the GIS contracting services fund to support state geographic information systems for the user community in Kansas. The agency revised estimate also includes 51.5 million in off budget expenditures, all from special revenue funds, which is an increase of 396,000 or 0.8% above the FY22 approved budget. Off-budget expenditures are categorized as such to avoid uh, double counting payments for one state agency to, in the, to the other. The increase can, pr can primarily be attributed to the adding of $1 million to its salary and wages expenditures by eliminating its shrinkage rate. Expenditures related to desktop as a service and a purchase of equipment for other state agencies, increased utilization of data center as service, services offered by OITS, Implementation of IT <clears throat> projects for OITS programs, congrat contractual service costs associated with Cisco SmartNet and state network maintenance, and increased travel and sustenance. Sustenance. The increase is partially offset by the cancellation of a planned IT security project, fluctuations in utilization of OITS services, and indirect costs related to such services. Reduced rent expenditures related to the landed building data center. Uh, exit. Elimination of computer equipment purchases. Decreased expenditures for salary and wages and fringe benefits. And reduced purchases of telecommunication equipment for state network maintenance. The revised estimate also includes 115 uh, off-budget FTEs positions for 22, which is an increase of 1.8 positions above the FY22 approved number. The increase is due to the conversion of a part-time and temporary staff to full-time. The governor concurs with 22. The subcommittee concurs with the governor's recommendation for 22. Any questions on 22? Questions? Seeing none, please proceed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mr. Chairman. The agency requests 4.3 million, included 4.3 million SGF for on-budget expenditures for FY23, the revised estimate is the same as the 22 revised estimate, including the amount of 43000 for GIS contracting services fund. For 23, the request also includes $51 million in off-budget expenditures, all from special revenue funds, which is a decrease of 79000 or 2% below the FY22 revised estimate. Off-budget off expenditures are categorized as such to avoid double counting payments from one agency to another. The decrease can, can primarily be attributable to Attributed to a reduced expenditures associated with purchases made on behalf of the other agencies for IT equipment and peripherals. Payments to third party vendors for operation of the Unisys Data Center and state maintenance, state mainframe, state mainframe. Completion of internal IT projects present present in FY22 revised estimate for implementation of the new service, now modules, and Aptio and Aptio. Elimination of rent for a data center previously located in the land and office, state office building and the absence of expenditures for passenger vehicles that were present in FY22 uh, revised request. The decrease is partially offset by increased off-budget expenditures for a three-year license renewal of the IT security project offered by Splunk. For the Kansas Information Securities Office, increase costs for project management software licenses and salaries, wages, and associated benefit costs across the agency's program. The request also includes 117 off-budget FTE positions for 23, which is an increase of two FTEs above the 22 estimate request number. The increases to accommodate increased use of services offered by the hosted service program for the Unisys Data Center. The governor concurs with the agency request for 23. The subcommittee concurs with the governor on 23. Questions on 23. Senator Hawk. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I really didn't have a question, but um, on the subcommittee, after, after having served on this for several years, I think some of us here, we, we did, uh, as a committee, uh, did compliment Secretary Burns Wallace and her staff because um, the OITS budget has not always been understandable and the system has 
had moments where many of us had doubts about in some of the sub agencies that were contracting. So I, I just wanted to compliment this budget, particularly and the work of the staff to get it in the shape that it appears to be in. Thank you. Other questions? Seeing none, go ahead and make your motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would agree with Senator Hawk. There was also a, an explanation uh, between OITS and the Department of Administration on how they have consolidated some of the fees that they charge the other agencies uh, across the state. And I think they are also working to continue uniformity and perhaps even a slight reduction or so in, in some of those charges they pass along. So, yes, uh, hopefully they're doing a better job. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I would move that uh, we uh, accept the uh, Office of uh, Information Technology Services budget for 22 and 23. I have a second by Senator Clays. Any other questions, discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Right. Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we'll have the... Uh, Kansas Department of Labor, Senator Schultrum. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> the budget for the Department of Labor, the agency estimate estimates revised 22 expenditures of 298 million, including 17.7 million SGF. This is an all funds decrease of 164 million or 35.6% and an SGF increase of $6.8 million or 62.6% from the FY22 approved amount. The SGF increase is due to the agency's supplemental request for additional staffing in administration and employment insurance services programs. The agency requests 6.8 million SGF and 110 FTE positions for surge staffing in the call center and the information technology division. The all funds decrease is primarily due to degree, decreased expenditures on unemployment insurance benefit. The agency states it estimates, estimates de decreased benefits expenditures as additional federal benefit program have ended and fewer individuals are claiming benefits. This decrease is partially offset by increased federal COVID-19 relief funds for administration of the unemployment insurance program. In August of 21, the State Finance Council approved $11 million in federal COVID-19 relief funds for surge staffing in the agency's call center. The governor recommends FY22 expenditures of 291 million, including 11 million SGF. This is a decrease of 6.6 .6 million in all SGF below the agency's 22 revised estimate. The decrease is due to the governor not recommending the agency's enhancement requests for staffing for the administration unemployment insurance benefits program. This decrease is partially offset by the governor's recommendation of 135,000 SGF for salary enhancements for customer service representatives and adjudicators and 100,000 SGF for costs to implement the 21 special session, House Bill 2001, which requires the agency to investigate complaints filed under the provision of the bill. The subcommittee recommendations for 22 are as follows. The subcommittee notes that after the governor's recommendation, 9.6 million in federal COVID-19 pandemic Relief funds became available for the Unemployment Insurance Benefit System Modernization Project, SB 159, appropriated 9.6 million SGF for the project and required the agency to pursue federal funds if available. Since federal funds are available, the 9.6 million SGF has lapsed and been replaced with federal funds. Number two, the subcommittee recommends that the Senate Committee on Ways and Means review the possible addition of 250,000 SGF for the unemployment ins uh, insurance system audit requirement in, in House Bill 2196. House Bill 2196 required that the agency spend 250,000 for 9.6 million of the 9.6 million SGF appropriated for the unemployment insurance benefit program system modernization project to be used to cover the expense of the audit. The agency noted that the expenses of the audit are not allowable expenditures under federal COVID-19 relief monies, and so the federal funds appropriated for the modernization project cannot be used to pay for the audit. But since then, it has been uh, determined that they can now use the uh, federal funds. Number three, subcommittee recommends that the subcommittee on ways and means review adding additional funds to cover salary costs of the enterprise. Employment Compensation Modernization and Improvement Council. The agency noted that it has already spent 29000 on salaries and has 
and had planned to use a portion of the $9.6 million appropriated for the modernization project to pay these salaries. Salaries are not an allowable expense under federal COVID-19 relief money, so the federal funds appropriated for the modernization program cannot be used for the salaries of the council. But here again, it's been determined that they can use now the federal funds. Or four, add, add language to create the American Rescue Plan State Relief Fund within the agency. Questions on 22. Questions on 22? Senator Petty. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, so, Senator, does that, so just to confirm, for, in items two and three, that now means that for both that 250000 and the, I guess it's the, 29,000 that federal funds can be used then? That's correct. Thank you. Senator Hall. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and apology. I'm on the subcommittee, and I'm trying to remember uh, item four. Uh, is that, if, if we do that ARPA relief fund, is, is that the money that would go into the unemployment trust fund that we passed the bill on last year that Put two hundred fifty million in, and another two fifty, or is that something else? Just creates the fund, so that we can spend the federal funds in three and four. Oh, gotcha. makes sense. Thank you for that. Sorry, I was asleep during that discussion in our subcommittee. I don't remember it all either. <laughs> Thank you. It's great to have company. Thanks. Co co Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, please move to 23. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The agency requests for uh, FY23 expenditures of $225.9 million, including $8.5 million SGF. This is an all-funds decrease of $76 million, or 25.7%, and the SGF decrease of $9.3 million, or 52.2%, below the agency's 22 revised estimate. The SGF decrease is due to the Unemployment Insurance Benefit System update, which occurred in 22 and, and does not reoccur in 23, partially offset by the agency's enhancement request for additional staffing. The all funds decrease is primarily due to the decreased expenditures on unemployment insurance benefits and decreased federal COVID-19 relief funds for administration of the unemployment insurance program. The governor's recommendation for 23 expenditures of 217 million, including 3.9 million SGF. This is a decrease of 4.6 million, all SGF below the agency's 23 request. This decrease is primarily due to the governor's recommending only partial funding for the agency's enhancement request for additional staffing. The agency requests 7.2 million SGF, 110 FTE positions for additional staffing. The staffing in the administration and employment insurance programs, the governor recommends 2.2 million SGF and 30 FTP, FTE positions for additional staffing in the administration and employment insurance programs. The governor also recommends 408,000 SGF for customer service representatives, <clears throat> adjudicators, and uh, adjudicator salary staff. The subcommittee concurred with the governor's recommend recommendations on 23 with the following adjustment. Add language to create the American Rescue Plan State Relief Fund within the agency. Questions on 23? Questions? Senator Petty. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I know that in 22, you had added line four that to create the American Rescue Plan State Relief Fund. And you that, said that was in order to be able to spend those funds for three and four. So in 23, then this, I'm gonna, I guess it's, it's continuing, but what would those funds be used for? in uh, preparation for any money that would happen to roll over to 23 so that we could manage it through that fund. Thank you. Other questions? Senator Fagg. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I noticed on uh, the total says 221,851, but in presentation at the bottom says 225.9. It's about a three or $4 million difference there. And I think Victoria's looking into that. Uh, 
Um, we're looking into it. We think it's a typo. Good catch, Mr. Banker. Mr. Chairman, if I may say, we did have a good uh, discussion on the operations um, of the agency, what they've done so far to um, prepare for upgrade IT, um, how they're handling claims and staffing uh, at present. Um, I am much more at ease with this agency, of course, than we had been previously. Uh, I think the response time now to claims has greatly been, been greatly reduced. Uh, I think our citizens out there are getting the help they need. So um, I am much relieved about the way they're operating the uh, agency at this point. It was a good presentation, and we asked some good questions. Good, good. So uh, is, is there any uh, work being done on trying to recover the $700 million in fraudulent claims? We did, we did ask that. Um, it is more of a federal issue because so many of them cross state lines. And so it has been turned over to um, FBI and persons like that. And you know how slow that goes. But it was a nationwide problem. And um, that's really what it's going to take to get anything, I think, recovered. I don't know that we've either got the, the manpower, the staff, or the ability to research and chase down anyone on the state level, with exceptions. With exceptions, there could be some that we could find uh, locally that were fraudulent, but I think uh, most of them have been uh, a nationwide attempt to defraud many of the unemployment systems across state lines, and so it's been uh, turned over to the FBI and, and other federal agencies. We did ask them that. Thank you. Senator Fagg. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, are the doors open over there now? I know at one time they were locked. I've still got a few that I've had troubles with, not getting answers on. I just wonder if they've opened the doors yet. Senator, that's a good question. <clears throat> um, of course, it was one of my concerns from the very beginning because we had people that could drive within 50 miles to hand in their paperwork, and they just couldn't even do that. And so it was very frustrating. I do not know that exact answer. Uh, I believe they're back all in their offices, but I'll check and get that answer for you. Think maybe someone here that could maybe answer that from my staff. Deputy Secretary Peter Brady. Okay, Deputy Secretary. Good uh, morning, Mr. Chairman. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, we can. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, and thank you for the accommodation. I uh, attempted to drive in today, but my uh, Ford Fusion was not equal to the task. Um, to address the question that was asked about the agency's current operations, at the beginning of the calendar year, uh, when Department of Administration updated their guidelines, we began bringing all of our staff back into the offices. Um, at this point in time, save a few areas where we were doing construction, most of our staff have returned to working in the office. Um, at least for part of the week. We do some staff on a hybrid model, some are in full time, just depending on the nature of their work. Um, if you come to our office in Topeka at 401 uh, Topeka Boulevard, we have staff uh, at the front desk to accept documents or anything that someone can hand in, um, but the waiting room area has been closed to the public. So we, we are accepting those as they come to our door though. Senator Fagg. Okay, I think you answered his question. Any other questions? Seeing that, thank you, Peter. Appreciate you being here today, and uh, thank you to have some staff here also. Um, Senator, would you like to make a motion? I would, uh, Mr. Chairman, with the uh, note that the uh, amount of $225 million on page one of the 23 uh, budget is incorrect. It is the 221851. So that was a typo. Again, I want to reiterate um, what I think uh, has been very good work by our uh, Department of Labor staff in, in addressing uh, the problems that they've had to go through. Um, can get pretty emotional sometimes with people that are just, you know, screaming for help and um, they're having to respond to them and so forth. So, again, I want to thank everybody for their work. So, 
Mr. Chairman, with that, I would move that we accept the 22-23 uh, budget for the uh, Department of Labor. We have a motion second by Senator Clays. Any questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Senator Solentrump. Next, we'll move on to financial institutions and insurance. Senator Fagg, we'll start out with the Office of the State Treasurer. Senator Fagg. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, agency estimates revised expenditures at $32.2 million, all from special revenue funds in FY 2022. This is an increase of $3.6 million, or 12.7%, above the FY 2022 approved amount. The agency estimates unclaimed property pay, uh, payments of $27.2 million in FY 2022. This is an increase of $9.4 million in claims above the FY 2021 actual amount. The agency reported a decrease in unclaimed property claim payments during the COVID-19 pandemic and anticipates claims to increase in FY 2022. The agency requests an additional $3.6 million, all from the unclaimed property claims fund in FY 2022 to make these additional claims claim payments. The agency revised estimate includes other adjustments of 10,478. Other adjustments include anticipated expenditures from the agency computer replacement plan and anticipated increases in salaries and wages expenditures for employer contributions to employee fringe benefits such as group health insurance. The governor concurred with the agency's revised estimate of FY 2022, and the committee concurs with the governor's recommendation in FY 2022. Stand for any questions, or you want me to? Whatever you'd like to do. Uh, is there anyone have any questions? Senator Hawk. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Senator Fagg, I don't know if it was is in this budget or, or the next one, but um, I know the legislature passed a couple bills last year uh, one during uh, our COVID pandemic was to help businesses. I think it was 50 or $60 million. And then when we had URI, we uh, uh, wanted to be, have money available to help out some, uh, I think, um, local units of government in terms of uh, the natural gas prices that they were facing, et cetera. I don't see that as part of the budget, and maybe that's somewhere else. Did you have any discussion about that? Uh, no, we did not. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll check with staff in the treasurer's office. I'm just kind of curious if, if people applied for that money and if we got it out there and how many people or businesses it helped. So thank you. Yes, uh, maybe, maybe we could get that for everyone. I don't know if that's part of this 2023 coming up, Senator Hawk. It might be with what's in here. Any other questions on 22? Seeing none, please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The agency requests a $32.5 million, all from special revenue funds for FY 2023. This is an increase of $320,000 or 1% above the FY 2022 revised estimate. The agency estimates unclaimed property claim payments of $27 million which is an increase of 200,000 above the FY 2022 revised estimate. The agency anticipates an increase in unclaimed property claims and payouts for FY 2023. The agency requests 2.7 million for salaries and wages for FY 2023 with an, which is an increase of 116,000 above FY 2022 revised estimates. This increase is primarily attributed to anticipated increases in employer contributions to employee fringe benefits such as group health insurance. The remaining increase is attributed to anticipated benefits such as group, I got the remaining increase attributed to anticipated increase in Kansas Investment Development Scholars, which is KIDS, matching grant program, uh, matching funds. This increase is uh, partially offset by a decrease of 20,000 in contractual services for FY 2022. The governor's recommendation uh, recommends expenditures of 45.5 million, all from special revenue from FY 2023. This is an increase of 13 million or 28.6% above the agency's FY 2023 request. The increase in SGF transfer occurring on a quarterly basis 
to the sales tax and revenue uh, uh, bonds, food uh, sales tax revenue replacement funds. The funds which will be used to hold star bond districts harmless from the elimination of sales tax on food and food ingredients as proposed by the governor. The Senate uh, committee uh, concurs with the governor's recommendation for FY 2023. Questions on 23? Seeing none, please make a motion. I move to accept the subcommittee's re uh, recommendation for the Office of the State Treasurer for FY 2022 and 2023. Second by Senator Clays. Any questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Next, we'll have Pool Money Investment Board, Senator Fagg. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this one is small enough. We'll hold our questions to the second one here, if that's okay with you. Uh, the agency requests a revised estimate of $762,000 all from the Pool Money Investment Portfolio Fee Fund for expenditures in FY 2022. This is unchanged from FY 2022 approved amount. The governor concurs with the agency's revised estimate for FY 2022, and the Senate uh, committee concurs with the governor's recommendation in FY 2022. Turning our attention to FY 23, the agency requests $787,000, all from the pool money investment fee fund for FY 2023, which is an increase of $25,000 above the FY 2022 revised estimate. Every two years, a statutory performance audit is required to be performed on the Pool Money Investment Board. The agency requests 12000 all from the Pool Money Investment Portfolio Fee Fund to cover anticipated costs for this audit for FY 2023. The agency requests additional adjustments of, of 13000 for FY 2023. This increase includes travel expenses to attend annual investment conferences and for the agency's technology hardware replacement plan, which includes $3,800 for annual software licenses and insurance fees. The governor concurs with the agency's request for FY 2023, and the committee concurs with the governor's recommendation for FY 2023. Is there any questions? Any questions on 22 or 23? Seeing none, please make your motion. I move to accept the subcommittee's recommendation for the Pool Money Investment Board for FY 2022 and 2023. I have a second by Senator Clays. Any questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Next, we'll have the Kansas Public Employee Retirement System, Senator Fagg. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this one's uh, fairly short, too, so we'll go for questions on the second one, if that's okay with you, sir. Yes, that's great. The agency submits a revised estimate of $63 million in expenditures and 98.4 FTE positions for FY 2022, including $62 million for the Kansas Public Employees Retirement Fund. This represents an increase of uh, $3 million, or 4.2%, above the approved by the 2021 legislator, legislature. The revised estimate includes an increase of 2.6 million in expenditures for the Kansas Public Employees Retirement Fund for investment management expenses. Each year, the submitted budget assumes a 7.75% return, which associates associated investment management expenses. When the system's investment por portfolio uh, experiences higher returns, investment-related expenses also increase. The governor concurred with the agency's revised estimate and recommends $63.1 million in expenditures and 98.4 FTE positions for FY22. The committee concurs for, uh, with the governor's recommendation in FY2022. Turning our attention to 2023. The agency requests $67 million in expenditures and 98 FTE positions for FY 2023, including $67 million 
from the Kansas Public Employers Retirement Fund. This represents an increase of 5 million or 7.2% above the agents or the revised estimate for FY 2022. The request includes an increase of 2.6 million expenditures for modernization of the pension administration system. For FY 2023, the agency has budgeted 9.2 million for the project with increased costs, including contractual expenditures with the company uh, Sagatech as it develops the new system. Major efforts include employer with web portal updates, administrative system upgrades, business process management, data profiling and cleaning, and development of the member web portal. The request also includes an increase of 2 million expenditures from the Kansas Public Employers Retirement Fund for investment management expenses. Each year, the, submit, the submitted budget assumes the 7.75% return, which is associated investment management expenses. When the system investment portfolio experiences higher returns, investment-related expenses also increase. The governor concurred with the agency's request and recommends 67.7 million in expenditures and 98.4 FTE positions for FY 2023. The committee concurs with the recommendations, the governor's recommendation for FY 2023. Are there any questions on 23? Senator Hawk. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And probably the the question I'm going to ask, we can't answer. <laughs> well, he's here, but I don't think we can. I, and I should have asked it during the report, but uh, since we had that report, and every every year uh, I get some constituents who wonder if we're ever going to give a COLA uh, or a 13th check. And, uh, you know, that's a legitimate question to ask, and I usually have to remind my constituents that the plan we have is a defined benefit, not a defined contribution plan. Uh, but uh, then when we hear the wonderful news of what a great job Capers has done in terms of uh, the returns and, and that we've done some things, whether it's paying off layering or, or borrowing money to try to get the unfunded liability. So my question is, if we did give a COLA, um, and maybe it was even a partial one or for those who have been retired 20 years or more, wherever uh, that biggest need might be or a 13th check, uh, what would that do to unfunded liability? Um, I don't think we can answer that question right now, but I'd like to throw that out. And if if we could get an answer to that, I, I don't know if the rest of the committee's interested, but I'm interested in if we did that. And I know we've done it a few times in the past prior to me being in the legislature. So I'd be curious what it would actually do to that. And I'm not honestly sure if I'm in favor of it because it's not the plan that we have, but I also hear some constituents who have uh, some financial hardships because they've been retired and they came in at a very low amount. Now we have a 7.5% uh, uh, cost of living increase that we're, everybody's facing. So I just raise that question if that's something we can get. To, I, I'd certainly uh, personally want to make sure that we get our unfunded liability up to at least 80% myself. But uh, if, if it would not hurt drastically that uh, unfunded liability, it might be something that um, we, we consider at some time, if not this year, some other time. Thank you. And you're welcome to respond to that, Senator Fagg, because I know you're always waiting for an easy question from me, and this may be the toughest one I've ever asked you. Thank you. Well, that was a long question. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I agree. You know, I'm sitting here thinking, uh, is it a one-time deal? Is it a permanent deal? How much it is? All that would factor into what that would do to that. So to me, that would be, I think you hit it on the head when you talked about uh, defined benefit plan, that uh, normally that doesn't happen. So that uh, would be something that would be addressed in the future. That'd be my answer. Thank you. And I, and I would point out that Anytime you take money out, it's going to increase your unfunded liability, yeah. and you're you're just going to go right back where we were. Uh, Mr. Chairman, and I, I certainly agree with that, and that's why I'm not always enthusiastic about it, but I know we have done it in the past, and we are making significant improvements. So 
Uh, I just wonder if it's possible to find out uh, one or two or three scenarios like the ones we've done in the past and what that might do to unfunded liability. So when we get down to omnibus, that may be something that... We, we can we can ask for some numbers. We'll, we'll get them, but uh, uh, I, like I said, we, we made a lot of mistakes in the past. If you want to go back there. <laughs> Any other questions? Send them again. No, oh, just a comment. I mean, it, for me, it's always a defined benefit. And we almost really messed it up in the 80s, giving colas, changing caps. Everybody knows when they sign that document that it's a defined benefit and they know what they're going to get. If they don't like that, then go play the market. So just don't think we should mess with that. Thank you. S Senator Fagg. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The thing I'd add, and I've heard Mr. Conroy say many a times, the 80% is a great place and starts to green, but our ultimate goal is 100%. So. Any other questions? Seeing none, Senator Fagg, if you'd like to make your motion. I'd be honored to. I move to accept the committee's recommendation for the CAPERS uh, for FY 2022 and FY 2023. I have a motion is second by Senator Clays. Any other questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Senator Fagg. Next, we'll move on to transportation. Uh, Senator Clays with the Kansas Department of Transportation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. While you are turning to the appropriate pages, I will make a comment that will clear up the discrepancy between the agency estimate and the governor's recommendation in both 22 and 23. The State Highway Fund Revenue Estimating Group came back with a different estimate, so that $10.5 million difference that you see there is simply them adjusting the expected revenues in each year. There is not an item associated with that. The agency in 22 requests $2.1 billion. There's a decrease of $179 million from the, uh, from the State Highway Fund. Uh, an increase of federal and other funds of $39.9 million from the FY22 amount. That decrease is attributable to the US 69 highway project being delayed. There's also a reduction that's partially offset by an increase in some Federal CARES Act funding that was $14.2 million. Rail improvements at 7.5, local support at 54.5, and some modernization projects at 39.3 million. The agency is requesting additional FTEs, 47 to be exact, above the FY22 approved. In addition to the increase in FTEs, there's an increase in expenditures for salaries and wages of 4.3 million uh, that are associated with executive orders. The agency is requesting $21 million in capital improvements for buildings. Uh, basically everything that KDOT does uh, has some element of capital improvement, so they actually section theirs out as capital improvements for buildings so that we aren't uh, reviewing every road project in that. So $21 million capital improvements for buildings for 22. The request is an increase of $6 million above the 22 amount. There are some sub-area modernization projects in there, um, and I can go over there, those in greater detail if you'd like. In addition, I can also go over in greater detail the FTE positions if you'd like that as well during the Q&A. And then, of course, the governor's recommendation, the, the difference, again, is just that uh, revenue estimate. The Senate committee uh, concurred with the governor's recommendation in 22, and I'll go ahead and do 23. Uh, and then stand for questions. Um, the agency is requesting two billion forty-one point three in special revenue. That's the state highway fund and federal funds for twenty-three. The request is a decrease of thirty-six point seven below the FY twenty-two revised estimate. It is a uh, attributable to reduction in federal CARES Act funding of fourteen point two, rail line improvements of seven point eight, cost share program estimates of ten point eight and the construction schedule of 19.4 million. The reductions are partially offset by increases in maintenance commodities such as concrete and asphalt and an increase in salaries and wages for the maintenance program of 2.9 million. The agency request includes the same FTE amount that was in the previous year with the 47 increase. 
The agency is requesting $23 million in capital improvements for buildings. The uh, request is an increase of $2 million above the 22 revised. The majority of the increase is for a construction of a new District 1 headquarters in Topeka at a roughly $11 million, if memory serves, without looking it up. Uh, the governor recommended expenditures of $2 billion. That's the 10.6 that's related to the uh, state highway fund uh, revenue estimate going up. Um, the governor's recommendation eliminates transfers from the state highway fund to the Kansas Department of Aging and Disability Services for mental health grants. That's $9.8 million. The Office of Emergency Communications and the Adjutant General's Department of $320,000 and the debt service on the state house bonds of 20.4 million. The recommendation also eliminates the transfer to the state general fund as planned. Uh, cumulatively, that should come to 90 something million dollars that's not being uh, transferred out. Those are also commonly referred to as the extraordinary transfers from the state highway fund. The transfers adjustment reductions are partially offset by increases in transfers for the Kansas Highway Patrol operations and the Division of Vehicles Operating Fund in the Department of Revenue, totaling $6.7 million. Those two items would be under the category of ordinary transfers uh, from the State Highway Fund. The Senate Committee concurred with the governor's recommendation for 23 with one adjustment, and that was adding back the $3 million from the Transportation Technology Development Fund for 23. That $3 million was in 22. We asked for some additional information, which was provided uh, by the agency. Um, that fund is not depleted, and it appears that they're not receiving the number of applicants for those funds uh, that would deplete the three million and twenty-two. So we would like uh, some more information before we move forward on the deletion of that, uh, as far as how many applicants, uh, what the criteria are for those projects, and maybe some of the why behind um, not receiving more applications for those program dollars. And with that, I will stand for questions on the FY22 and 23 budgets for the Kansas Department of Transportation. Any questions, Senator Hawk? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you, Senator Clays, for heading up this budget. I think it's an excellent budget. Uh, I do have a question about our bonded debt limits. Um, my recollection is a few years ago, we had to raise that bonded because we weren't fully making the sales tax transfers and part of the bank of KDOT problem. Um, now that we're making that transfer, are we within that statute? And I think it's 18%, maybe it's 16, I'm not sure. Do you know where we are on that in terms of our uh, debt limit? I assume we're well under that now. Yeah, that's a good question. I would assume that we're under it, but I do not have that in front of me. Let me see if Stephen knows. Yeah, I Um, we we might ask Dylan. He's on WebEx. Uh, if he knows exactly where we're all at on that, but maybe that's a question we can hold for another day. If he doesn't have that off the top of his head, Dylan, are you there? Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Can you hear me? All right. We we can now. Yes. All right. Uh, we are below the limit. I had looked at that number when I was originally doing the uh, budget analysis. I don't have that right in front of me right this moment, but we are below that debt limitation. Okay, you might get that number and share it with the committee when you, uh, will you maybe next week. We'll do, sir. Thank you. Any other questions? Senator Hawk. Uh, I just had one more. Uh, do you know what we're buying with the Transportation Technology Development Fund? Is, is that 5G uh, experiments? or? Uh, and I th I'm glad you put that in there so we might get more information. I'm just not sure what kinds of things specifically we're doing with that. Yeah, and that's that's kind of what I was wanting was some more examples because it is somewhat vague. But I'll I'll tell you what was provided to us, and it's that they're, and it's part of the Ike program. Um, it's projects that address an important transportation need, such as promoting safety, improving access or mobility, and implementing new transportation technology. And I think we want to drill into um, who, what projects were applicants for it. It. The applications, I think, open in October of 21, 
and just kind of getting a read on what that thing's doing. Um, but what my understanding is is that there's five million in the fund, and that uh, it's nowhere close to having projects that would deplete the three million and twenty-two. Thanks for that information. And I'm just on the surface of it. I would think, as we know, there we have a couple bills. Uh, about using some of the new technologies, I think it would be wise for us to be prudent and, and be ahead of the game and know what might be coming down the, quote, the pike <laughs> in terms of this area. So thank you for putting that in. Senator Fagg. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I was wondering on the delay for U.S. Highway 69, uh, what was causing that or what the plan was on that. I've traveled that quite a bit, and I know those people would be very interested in that part. Yeah, um, Senator, uh, we, we didn't talk about it this year, but if memory serves from last year, it's, it was a COVID delay. Okay. Still on track and won't be an issue then. Yeah, there was nothing, nothing about finances or anything like that that was problematic. Senator Solentrum. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator, is the uh, new <clears throat> construction on South uh, Topeka Boulevard the location for the, the regional administration office? Uh, let me pull that up. It's in here. On the east side? I don't recall if that's the one on 70 or not. Hold on. I think... I think the one we're talking about is the one on 70 for the new location. One moment. Sure. The other question I would have is, is had there been any dis is that Dylan? We might ask Dylan. Dylan, do you know the location? I would have Dylan, we, we, we don't hear you. You might be on mute. Mr. Chairman, uh, no, I, I, I see that Stephen has passed along the page to, to the chair, so I would defer to Senator Clay's uh, to give that response. Uh, Thank you. Um, so just reading through it here, it's at the I-70 interchange at 21st and Rice Road. So that was the, that's where the new District 1 headquarters would be located. It is a $11 million project. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman, the second part of my question is, has there been any discussion about any uh, renovation or uh, improvements in the south entrance exit um, of the turnpike here in Topeka? Just in your conversation at all with anybody in transportation? No, the KTA handles that. We don't have um, oversight over the Kansas Turnpike Authority. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Senator Petty. Actually, mine was just a continuation of that Transportation Technology Development Fund. I just wanted to confirm, We uh, is the subcommittee asking for us to have information before our final budget or sometime this year or yeah i think i'll probably just ask the agency to give me some examples of what's been coming in so that we can get an idea of of the amount that's there and available and whether this program just needs some more advertisement to the appropriate entities that qualify and maybe that will take care of this but my my guess was that that three million since it wasn't going to be spent if it wasn't lapsing i just don't want it to disappear that's kind of why we just decided to pop in three million. It won't be that number at the end, but it'll be it'll be something. Thanks. I just uh, I was hoping that we were going to be getting the information. I mean, as it's available. Yeah, I think that's wise to see if we can't get that before omnibus. Senator McGinn. Um, my question is for Dylan, and um, just a comment, Dylan. If if you would come into the Capitol, I think it'd be warmer than where you are right now, standing. <laughs> But uh, that was appropriate. <laughs> I, the backup sheet we get for being on the committee could the rest of us have have that backup information about KDOT? Could you get that information to us? Yeah, that and and if and the testimony that the secretary may have had. So, thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, Senator Clay's. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move the FY22 and 23 budget for the Kansas Department of Transportation of the subcommittee recommendation. I have a motion, a second by Senator Fagg. Any questions? Seeing none, all in favor? 
All right. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Senator Clays. Uh, committee, that concludes our work for today. I'd like to, to thank Senator Solentrump, Senator Fagg, and Senator Clays for their reports today. Did anyone have any other questions or comments? Do we have subcommittees Monday in here? Full committee Monday. Okay, so we're, we're doing report outs on Monday, just for a heads up, 1030. Okay. Okay. So, Senator McGinn will finish at 3, and then we will all meet uh, back here on Monday. And with that, we're adjourned. Thank you.